There are multiple layers in the Malian story. There is, there is Mali for itself and the, and the fact that democratization clearly had failed. But Mali is at the epicenter of a wide, wider um, regional and international peace and security threat. The, the north of Mali, where, um, where much of the crisis has, has unfolded, um, is also a no man's land and it's been a hub for a network of various um, so-called terrorist groups, um, traffickers from narco, narco um, trafficking, human trafficking, cigarette trafficking. It's also a place traditionally where you've seen Arabists and other traders traditionally operate. When the coup in Mali um, happened, we had staff on the ground and um, we worked with the staff um, on the ground to come up with a media statement um, on why the coup happened and the prospects for, um, for moving forward and um, what the international community, particularly the regional organisation ECOWAS and the UN should do. Um, we also spoke to a number of interlocutors um, from within the region, among the national authorities and the international community that was on the ground as to what the next steps were to reverse the coup, to return to constitutional order and how ECOWAS can be instrumental in trying to bring peace and security back. We, we got quickly um, drawn into the policy um, um, initiatives that needed to be taken, sanctions on those sanctions, incentives, no incentives, um, and the leadership of the junta and the role of, of the other national authorities in trying to come up with an interim um, arrangement um, for, for 12 months. Of course, like other people, um, we were not able to get on, the, on a flight very quickly. Um, so those two, two, two weeks provided us with a great opportunity to at least talk immediately to those that were implicate that were involved in trying to think through how to reverse the, the military coup that had taken place. What we did was to bring everything to, to into a comprehensive report that charted the history of Mali from 1960s and to say why we got to this crisis. A number of people were surprised that there was a, there was going to be a coup. A number of people were surprised that this so-called democratic country was facing a crisis. So we tried to explain why that happened and, that, and to explain why there was this rebellion on the 17th of January and why there was this coup on, on, on in, in, in March as well and that what needed to be done to reverse the process. We came up with a host of recommendations um, for the national authorities, um, for the various re rebel groups that were holding the north of, the, of, the, of, of Mali. Various, there were three cities that they're taking hold of. We came up with recommendations for ECOWAS um, for the international community through the Security Council and, and the European Union. Um, one of the things that we, we called for was a more cautious approach towards intervention, that um, to announce intervention prematurely without having a clear concept or operation was going to be key. We called for transparency in the, intervention, in the mediation that was being led by ECOWAS. And then we said that once there was a return to constitutional order, once there was a reversal of the coup, that there has to be, um, they had to review the suspension of aid. The EU has begun, and, and we called for political dialogue or political solution as well. The EU itself has, has ha already has a, um, a Sahel strategy um, in place, and it picked up and recognised some of the recommendations that we pursued, particularly around um, political dialogue and aid suspension as well.